Hello everybody, welcome to the Little Shop of Horrors. There once was an event that threatened the existence of the entire human race. It occurred in the most seemingly innocent and unlikely of places, Skid Row in New York. Welcome to the Little Shop of Horrors. Seymour Krelbull is a meek, clumsy employee of Mr Mushnick. He lives a dreary life among the unfortunate residents of Skid Row. Taken in by Mushnick as a young orphan, Seaman lives in a tiny room below the flower shop and is treated poorly by his employer. The light of his life is his co-worker, Audrey, a fragile sorry woman stuck with a mean boyfriend. The flower shop is making virtually no money and Mr Mushnick is on the verge of closing it for good when Audrey mentions the strange and interesting new plant Seymour has been cultivating and suggests that if it is properly advertised, it might attract more business. Seymour presents the plant, a large bud surrounded by layers of leaves. Mushnick is pleasantly surprised when customers begin flocking in after seeing the little plant in the window. Seymour has no idea what kind of plant it is, but explains how he got it. One night, not so long ago, a solar eclipse occurred on the very same night he was shopping for odd new plants. After daylight returned, the strange plant seemingly appeared out of nowhere. Seymour bought it for cheap and brought it home to examine. He shyly admits that he named it Audrey II. The shop is starting now to do record business until the plant begins to wither. Seymour frantically tries to nurse it back to health, though water, sunlight, fertiliser and minerals have done no good. When he pricks his finger on a rose thorn and draws blood, Audrey too responds vigorously. Seymour realises what is living on and reluctantly gives it a few drops Audrey, too, has a dramatic growth spurt and business picks up, with Seymour becoming a local celebrity. He does not reveal the secret behind the plant's health. Audrey's boyfriend, Orin Scrovello, is a sadistic dentist with a leather jacket, motorcycle and ducktail haircut. He adores his profession because of the constant opportunities to inflict pain on others. He enhances his pleasure through his habit of huffing nitrous oxide or giggle gas for a euphoric high. Seymour and Mushnik are concerned as Ostry often comes home to work a little upset. Oren arrives at the shop one night to pick up Audrey and Seymour sees firsthand how horribly he treats her. Audrey, meanwhile, secretly dreams of an idyllic suburban life with Seymour, but is too frightened to leave Oren. Seymour angrily paces around the empty shop at night, venting his frustrations to Audrey too, who is now roughly the size of an armchair. To Seymour's great surprise, Audrey too responds with a human voice and demands more food. Knowing that the plant can no longer live on mere droplets of blood, partially because it's too big and partially because Seymour is now weak and anemic from feeding the plant from his bleeding fingers, Seymour is reluctant to provide it with bigger portions. The smooth talk in Audrey too promises Seymour money, fame and the girl of his dreams if he continues to nourish it with human blood. Seymour initially refuses to murder for the benefit of Audrey too, reasoning that he doesn't know anyone who deserves to get chopped up and fed to a hungry plant. Audrey too directs him to the window, where he sees Orin being mean to Audrey across the street. Filled with rage, Seymour agrees to bring back a specific meal for the plant. The next day, Seymour goes to Orin's office with a gun in his coat pocket. After finishing with his patient, 
Orin drags Seymour into his office to get the sadistic fix he's been craving. Though he wants to spare Audrey further pain and has promised Audrey too fresh blood, Seymour is terrified of shooting Orin. Conveniently, Orin dons his special gas mask, which provides him with a constant nitrous oxide and increases his sadistic pleasure. The mask malfunctions, and Seymour watches his nemesis asphyxiate before his eyes. Seymour drags the body back to the flower shop, where he reluctantly chops it up with an axe and feeds it piece by piece to Audrey too. Seymour is understandably shaken by the incident, and he sees the police speaking with Audrey the next morning about Oren's disappearance. He tries to comfort Audrey, telling her that she had deserved a better man all along. While Audrey admits that her low self-esteem kept her tied to Orin, she feels partially responsible for his fate because she had been silently wishing him out of her life. Though he does not want to reveal the truth about what became of Orin, Seymour promises to stand by Audrey no matter what. Invigorated from finally winning Audrey's love, Seymour returns to the flower shop. He is confronted by Mushnik, who had seen Seymour dismembering Orin's body the night before. Mushnik assumes that Seymour's devotion to Audrey caused him to murder the cruel dentist, but does not suspect that Audrey too is involved and knows nothing of its grisly diet. Mushnik leads Seymour upstairs at gunpoint, planning to turn him in to the police. He then offers Seymour a proposition. Seymour leaves town forever, and Mushnik keeps the money-making plant. As Audrey too coaxes Seymour to sacrifice Mushnik to clear his own name, Seymour nervously backs Mushnik into the gaping mouth of the hungry plant, killing two birds with one stone. With Audrey too grown to enormous proportions, Seymour's celebrity increases. However, he is miserable and terrified of the plant's eating habits getting out of hand. He begins to fend off the media and turn down large sums of money, feeling guilty for his part in the secret deaths of Audrey II's meals. Seymour becomes more stressed and desperate. He lies to Audrey about Mr Mushnik's whereabouts, pretending that he's going to be away from the business for a very long time, but not saying the real reason why. Almost at breaking point, Seymour takes his chance and asks his beloved Audrey if she would still love him if there was no plant around. To his delight, Audrey confirms she loves him, plant or no plant. Now Seymour knows what he must do to end this mess forever. Seymour is about to send Audrey home to pack clothes and get ready to run away from Skid Row forever. Inadvertently, she hears a strange beckoning voice from inside uh, the show and is intrigued at who or what this might be. To her amazement, she finds herself talking to a plant. Charming as ever, the plant coaxes the poor girl forward to look inside his mouth. When she is in place, the jaw lowers and chomps down on the unsuspecting girl. Seymour sees the commotion, but... It is too late. Audrey is gone forever. Seymour deduces that this was the plant's plan all along. It was an alien that came to Earth during the solar eclipse and was bent on world domination. This is it for Seymour, who eventually feels there is nothing left to live for. He jumps inside the singing plant carrying an axe. The plant finds this hilarious and makes a final short meal of the briefly famous, unsuspecting, innocent botanist.